Assalamu alaikum everybody, a prophetic reading of peace. I want to make a very short video uh, to just talk about how at our annual banquet that's coming up this Saturday, we're going to be honoring the legacy of Assalamu alaikum everybody, a prophetic reading of peace. I want to make a very short video uh, to just talk about how at our annual banquet that's coming up this Saturday, we're going to be honoring the legacy of Abbas and Masri by giving him uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, for many of you who may not know, Basim Masri is a local Muslim Palestinian American who was very active in the Ferguson uprising. He was well known for his live streaming of the Ferguson protests and the Ferguson uh, events that were going on there. A lot of times people don't realize that Basim not only was a live streamer, but while he was there, he was connecting the struggle for black liberation along with the struggle for Palestinian liberation. Many of us might forget that during Basim's lifetime, um, and when the Ferguson uprising really started, people in Palestine were tweeting protesters in Ferguson on how to make gas masks and how to deal with tear gas and how to deal with these type of police uh, attacks that were happening against those populations. And Boston was there to record it and, and do that as well. Oftentimes when we look back on people, we uh, glorify them and we honor them. And yet at the same time, we have to be honest and remind people of what it was like for Boston when he was doing this. To be very honest, when Basim was out there live streaming uh, the Ferguson protesters, he was not getting a lot of support. In fact, there are many, many people who were uh, upset with Basim, to be quite frank, for going out there for live streaming the events and things of this nature. And of course, at that time, it's very, very hard for a young man, especially at Basim, who was I think maybe 26 at the time, to go out there day after day and continue to record and to continue to live stream because he firmly believed in standing for justice even when he didn't receive support, even when people didn't support him. And now we see the fruit of that work. Because of Boston's work in Ferguson, he was also able to build relationships with many, many people inside of that movement. And through those relationship building, he was able to educate them about the struggle for Palestine and the liberation struggle that they have. And they were able to connect the struggle for black liberation in America along with Palestinian liberation as well, which is quite a st a stunning. I'm also very proud that the last event that Basim spoke at was our Palestine conference that we held at uh, just this last year. And alhamdulillah, he was there along with his good friend Tef Poe, along with Sister Linda Sarsour, who was also going to be our speaker. And subhanAllah, it just so happened with Destiny and Faith that the last public appearance that he spoke at is that he was again standing up for the rights of Palestine, again making sure that these two issues were connected and speaking truth to power. And I think that's just so astonishing. Of course, as many of us know, um, Basim Masri died at a very young age. He just died several a few months ago at the age of 31. Uh, but even in a short lifetime, even in a short lifetime, he was able to accomplish so much more than I think anybody else that I know of or anybody else that I'm aware of in bringing together these two issues and passionately standing for justice, especially when it was hard. I remember the last time I spoke with Basim, outside of, you know, civil rights work and whatnot, we were at a barbecue on Eid, and um, every time Basim would see me, he always called me cuz, how you doing cuz, and many people, when they see Basim, they, especially on TV, or they know him through the news or his activism, they forget how much of a gentle heart Basim was. He was a person that whenever you spoke to him, he would always stop, listen, wait until you're totally done, and then he would think about it, then respond. And that type of attention, that type of care is something that's very rare in people today. And But Basim had that. And that's how I knew Basim as my cuz, as a, a young person who stood for justice. We're very honored to uh, give him this award uh, this Saturday. Inshallah, we hope to see everybody there. And we hope that Basim's uh, legacy is understood not only in St. Louis, but across the country. Because in his lifetime, he was able to accomplish a lot more than I think many of us would ever accomplish in our lives. Jazakallah khair,